Well, hello there. So, really quick video today. Uh, I just wanted to give you an answer to a question uh, that has been asked by many people, it seems, and nobody has a clear answer to. So that is, can quadraphonic records be decoded with a cheap uh, Dolby decoder? And the answer is yes, sorta. So, uh, what I have here is a Kenwood, let's take a look at that, AV surround processor SS3300. It is just a basic, a very basic uh, surround processor, so it simply decodes uh, the rear channel and the center channel from a ProLogic encoded signal. Well, it, it also does uh, the old uh, Dolby stereo. So, uh, what I wanted to see is if I could decode uh, my records, my SQ records, which, well, I bought uh, the Mike Oldfield boxed set um, a while ago, and I didn't have a means to decode it. And it really didn't sound that good uh, without decoding, so I found this on eBay for quite a cheap price and decided to give it a shot since you know uh, actual SQ decoders like quadraphonic decoders are quite expensive like in the hundreds of monetary units expensive um, so uh, what I tried to do here is well I, ha I had heard uh, about people decoding SQ records with Dolby ProLogic uh, decoders. Most of them had uh, more luck with Dolby ProLogic 2. Thing is, I couldn't find standalone Dolby ProLogic 2 decoders, and I sure as heck am not using one of those AV all in one receivers instead of my proper amplifier. So, what I did is I got this, and I have heard. Uh, about people actually decoding uh, SQ records with a regular ProLogic pro uh, decoder, so what one, and it kind of works actually. So the rear channels, which without a decoder are actually completely sent to the uh, left channel on a stereo system, and they're completely out of phase and they sound terrible this thing actually sends it to the rear, like sends them both to the rear. Uh, it does mix them together, so it makes them into one channel, and uh, the right channel, I believe, is, uh, well, one of the two channels is actually louder than the other, but it does send them to the rear, and it does actually decode them, and it uh, gets them in phase, back in phase, so it does the 90 degree uh, phase shift. Uh, so they sound okay, kinda. Uh, the front channels, of course, have all of that signal removed, so they're just the front channels, and they're just what they should sound like. So that's good. Also, the center channel works as a center channel. <laughs> it really doesn't do anything. It just plays whatever is played on both channels, so in this receiver I just leave, left it in phantom mode, so yeah, I don't use a center speaker. Problem with the uh, rear channels is, well, surround channels they're called in this system. The problem is, uh, this system was designed uh, to decode audio from uh, beta and uh, VHS, especially VHS uh, tapes with analog hi-fi sound and it just so happens that analog hi-fi sound on VHS is actually recorded along with the video track and so it's read by the same heads and then it's just uh, decoded in the VCR to analog stereo and the problem with that is you have in a VCR you have four heads that are con constantly switching from which one is reading the tape at a given moment. And 
at, at a regular volume you wouldn't hear uh, the changes in audio, but at a very low volume you would be able to hear the heads actually switching from one to other. So what they did here is they put a 7 kilohertz, uh, mm, sorry, low pass filter uh, for the rear channel since the rear channel is actually encoded at, a, at quite a lower volume so it needs to be amplified and when it was amplified without a filter you got a head chatter which is what it's called. So uh, for the purposes I wanted it for I wanted to remove that filter since SQ, the SQ system encodes uh, full range on four channels. So what I did is I got my soldering iron and I got to tinker with this. I didn't find any schematics at all about this, any no service manuals, nothing. I think I found one but it was behind the paywall and it the site didn't look very uh, legit, the place where it was sold. So I started injecting signals uh, all around which uh, with my equipment means getting my mini disc player playing some song and using an RCA uh, jack with the ground connected to the case or in this case to the circuit ground uh, and just touching the <laughs> the tip of the RCA jack uh, to some points on the board and so I found that the final signals, so all the filtered stuff, all that, uh, is present on this connector, which actually isn't used for anything in this. I presume it is done for calibration purposes and all that, for factory, you know, testing. And I also found that this pin right here, uh, you know, rightfully labeled S out, is actually this round output from the decoder. So, good. So all I needed to do was bridge this to this, cut whatever circuitry was in between there, and that's it, fixed. <laughs> uh, I didn't have a the seven kilohertz low pass filter, and well, it I traced out the circuit, and it turns out that the signal enters through this resistor. It goes fr uh, so it goes right from here. To this pot, I guess to adjust the level. Then to the res to this resistor, exits this resistor, and it it sucks. This these two actually uh, form a voltage divider. I believe that one's connected to the ground. And the output from this uh, voltage divider goes into this section of this vertical circuit. Uh, so this has. Uh, a pin labeled DN, so I guess that's Dolby in maybe I don't know. Uh, so that is the non not filtered, uh, the completely untouched uh, signal for the rear channel. Then it has this S out, that is the filtered signal for the um, rear channel. So I think the circuit. Uh, look up the IC number, I couldn't be bothered, also does the channel drifting and all that since it has uh, some uh, I squared C pins over here and some data pins. I do believe I do believe uh, this does the channel drifting so I had to keep the signal going inside of here. So what I did is I simply uh, removed this resistor down here from one of the holes there which simply was uh, that output. So I disconnected the input from the amplifier, I disconnected it from the output of this which is the filter and I simply connected it straight through there while keeping the connection uh, to this right here so this thing could still do all of its uh, placebo magic. And it turns out that well, it works. It actually works really well. So now I get full range on the uh, rear channel. And 
it's kind of a triphonic system, not quite quadraphonic, since, you know, we I, I only have one uh, back channel, but at least uh, what should sound in the back sounds in the back, and what should come out of the front speakers come out, comes out of the front speakers, which is certainly an improvement. And considering this thing was, I believe, 20 euro for the unit with free shipping, so because I found it locally, uh, I think it, it it's quite a mid-range solution, solution in between just hearing your SQ records like shit and getting proper expensive uh, quadrophonic decoders. So yeah, I think that about wraps it up for this video. I'm talking about wrapping it up. I have to wire wrap that there. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.